My name is Guilherme Varela, and I will be the presenter for the methodology for reinforcement learning, learning based agents for adaptive traffic signal control on behalf of my team. I would like to start out the presentation by saying that traffic congestion is a huge problem. Only in the European Union region, the costs directly related to congestion amount to the whopping total of 270 billion euros per year. The indirect costs due to waste at an extra expense of 300 million euros. Traffic signal controls play a pivotal role on traffic. They are both responsible to alleviate bottlenecks as well as to ensure that the safety of transportation users. Adaptive traffic light signal control has been an active research field for many decades now. A recent survey on the domain has ranked controllers from early generation on one until more advanced generation five. Generation five controllers have the following capabilities. They are able to recalibrate themselves, they react more efficiently to changing of demands, they do not require a formal model for traffic patterns as the controllers from the previous generations. Reinforcement learning based controllers are ranked among the top controllers from generation 5. A reinforcement learning agent or RL agent is capable of learning by interacting with an environment. At each stage, it observes the world, takes an action and receives a reward, which is an indicator of how desirable or undesirable the next state is. There are many challenges on modeling reinforcement learning adaptive traffic signal controllers. One of them is inherited from the transportation engineering literature. A survey from 2010 reports that controllers are hard to compare and more more or less unique. A decade later, in 2020, not much has changed as there is still no unified framework for comparing the performances of the different models. So, how can we cope with this lack of common basis of comparison of different models? An established fact is the, that reinforcement learning agent might overfit the environment. We can see in the figure the return obtained during training of an agent in a task unrelated to transportation. Researchers have shown that only by changing the random number generators and keeping everything else constant, we can observe very different results. So how to make sure that the policies reported can be reproduced by our colleagues is a concern from the methodological standpoint. Efficiency. Efficiency is the ultimate goal from which to evaluate a control system. But transportation engineering departments are the ones which ultimately face the liabilities for, from unsafe or unfair signal plans. In the absence of any other constraints, the reinforcement learning agent might attempt to do some rather silly things. On the left, the agent chooses to switch the signals every three seconds to ensure the maximum throughput in the intersection. It's clearly not a viable implementation. To the right, an agent may elect the main street and just keep that one green for long stretches of time, which is clearly unfair. So, the question is, how do we design a controller which has safer transitions and it is also fair? Now we shift gears to the glossary used by the transportation engineering departments in, in order to better grasp on the, get a better grasp on the issues facing the controllers. Incoming approaches are all the lanes which go into the intersection while outgoing approaches are the lanes that leave the intersection. Phases are a group of movements from incoming approaches to outgoing approaches which do not generate conflicts or cra car crashes. In the example, north-south is green at the same time to indicate that the face is to west is red. Two classical strategies deployed by transportation engineering departments are fixed time strategies, 
where the cycle time is fixed in order to better achieve coordination on neighborhood intersections and actuated strategies which have a slack to either extend or shorten a cycle time up to some extent. Those are the features of the baseline used in our work. Static is the best static policy after performing many rounds of grid search. Webster is a well-known fixed time strategy which computes the amount of time to assign to the busiest phase during the, cycle, the peak time. Actuated controllers use the same boundaries as the Webster, but with some slack. Max pressure is a very reactive kind of controller which evaluates both incoming and outgoing approaches and outgoing approaches and are more flexible than the actuated controllers. The framework for reinforcement learning agents is the Markov decision process or MDP. An MDP can be defined as a five tuple. The first element is the set of all states from the environment. The second element is the action space and is the set of all actions the agent may take. The third element is an explicit model for the traffic patterns. The fourth element is the reward. And the fifth element is the discount factor. One thing to keep in mind is that state space, action space and reward are still open research topics, while mo most works in the literature opt for not defining a model. The policy is a mapping from states to actions which attains good long-term strategies. Q-learning is a well-known algorithm with the recursive form above, which includes the optimal action, A prime, an agent may take, given that it's currently on state S. So, for the lack of a standardized environment, we developed a methodology instead. Our proposed methodology has four steps. The first step is preprocessing, then the MDP formulation and reinforcement learning method, training and evaluation. The first step is preprocessing. There is some manual labor required to build a real-world scenario. There are three steps involving different pieces of software. First, we strapped a section of downtown Lisbon from OpenStreetMaps, an open-source database for geospatial data. The na next, the map sections are cropped, rotated, and verified manually for missing links between streets using a tool called JOSM. At last, the files are loaded into Sumo, the micro simulator. On the left, you can see a section from the streets of downtown Lisbon on OpenStreetMaps. To the right, the two networks imported into Sumo are overlaid on a single figure. The next step is generating the routes and simulating the demands, which can be done by a suite of tools provided by Sumo. In our case, it used a uniform distribution for vehicle generation. One thing to keep in mind is that vehicles do not select routes at random. Too many routes with too many left turns might lead to grid locks. The second step in our methodology is the MDP formulation. In our case, the state is described by a vector of the total waiting times for all, all vehicles during the cycle. The first entry is then the total waiting times experienced by all vehicles in the incoming approaches for phase 1 north south during the last cycle, which is yellow. And the second entry is the total waiting times experienced by all the vehicles in the incoming approaches for phase 2 east-west during the last cycle, which is red. Our action space is constrained to fixed cycles. There are seven distinct actions which differ only by the timing assignment from phase 1 to phase 2. One of the strengths from the reinforcement learning based approaches is the ability to learn directly from interacting with the environment, not from estimating a model from the traffic pattern. So we opt for not specifying a model. The reward for each intersection is actually a penalty and it is the negative of the total amount of waiting times on the intersection. The discount factor is set to 0 
A popular deep reinforcement learning technique is calling deep Q networks. Now, instead of estimating the Q function directly, the estimates are extracted from the deep neural network with parameter theta. The next step is the training. Here we discuss only the training for the intersection scenario. We run 30 independent training experiments with different seeds for 50,000 cycles of 6 seconds each. That, that amounts to about 35 days of simulation time, which results in 30 different policies. At the end of each cycle, we collect the rewards from each experiment and obtain the intervals shown in the figure. The plot is indicative that the agent is learning as the average rewards are rising and the standard deviation from the different runs is decreasing. During training, we will also keep track the, from the actions the agent takes. We see as the training progresses, the agents tend to pick a more lower ID actions. Should such actions assign longer times to phase two east-to-west, which receives more traffic flow. That makes sense, as there are more incoming cars on phase two east-to-west. That is also an indicator that the agent is learning. The next step is we evaluate each of the 30 policies obtained during training. For each policy, we perform three ro rollouts for one whole simulation day. The three most common metrics to evaluate ATSC systems are speed, waiting time, and travel time. In this table, we can see that the average and standard deviation obtained by the data from the 90 evaluation trials. We can see that the agent is capable of attaining the highest speeds for the intersection, while the max pressure controller attains the lower waiting times. One thing to keep in mind is that for the single intersection, the max pressure is capable of adapting this cycle length. Hence, it's much more flexible than the actions available for the cho choice of the agent. To ensure that the results are unbeast, we also report population statistics. From the 90 evaluation trials, we can obtain the average behavior per policy. This is an average of the average travel times generated generated by each policy. We can see that the max pressure controller indeed generates the shortest average travel times, but it's, more, it's also more flexible and uses both information from in -go, incoming and outgoing approaches. The enforcement learning agent in yellow in the, generates policies as good as the best performing static policy in red found through grid search. One thing could keep to keep in mind is that this is a simple scenario with only one intersection. The approach of finding the best optimal policy through brute force quickly becomes unfeasible as networks scale. Our action schema guarantees that both phases are served at every cycle. Furthermore, it also guarantees a minimum time for each phase. In that respect, the traffic signal plans are generated are both safe and fair. So, in summary, for the lack of unified framework, we've developed a methodology. The challenge of reproducibility was addressed using population statistics. The challenge of safety and fairness was addressed by constraining the action space. Reinforcement learning based controllers overperform all other controllers in terms of speed. Reinforcement learning matches the grid search for the optimal static policies in terms of travel time. So, this is the end of the presentation, and now we, I believe, we have a session, uh, a session of QA. See you there.